the structure of DNA was uh, discovered by Crick and Watson based on X-ray diffraction data by uh, Franklin uh, and others at King's. Uh, a great deal of ingenuity went into uh, creating that uh, famous model of the double helix. But the structure suggested how it might work, but it didn't really tell us how DNA would contain information to make proteins, how genes could be switched on and off, how genes would be regulated. All of those things were still big mysteries. My interest is on the structure and function of the ribosome. Life as we know it would not be possible uh, without the ribosome. To explain what the ribosome is, we have thousands of genes in every cell in our body. And a lot of what these genes do is contain information on how to make proteins. Each one of them is made according to instructions that are present in our genes. And the process of how to use that information, how to read it and stitch together a protein is done by this large molecule called the ribosome. And so my work has been trying to understand how the ribosome works, which started off by trying to understand what it looks like. If you wanted to understand how a car worked, you would need to understand how the pistons are present and how they fire inside the cylinder through the transmission to the wheels. So it's the same thing with large complex molecules. They're uh, essentially like miniature machines Many antibiotics work by targeting bacterial ribosomes. That is to say, they'll bind in a pocket in the bacterial ribosome and stop it from working. This would be the equivalent of throwing something into a machine that would gum up the works. And one of the benefits of having an atomic structure of the ribosome is we, we and many others have been able to solve the structure with many different antibiotics bound to the ribosome. So we can see precisely how these antibiotics bind to the ribosome and block it. And that also paves the way for the synthesis of improved antibiotics. Maybe they can overcome resistance and so on. The MRC takes a long view of research, and especially at the LMB. The Council supports everything from very, very fundamental research, which might not have any applications for decades and possibly never, okay, but, in, but advances our understanding of some fundamental problem, all the way to very clinically applied research which can provide immediate benefit. And so uh, often people work on projects at the LMB that take many, many years, sometimes a decade, uh, to come to fruition. And the ribosome is one of those problems where if you started working on it today, it would often take many years to even get a, a result that you could actually publish. Now, ironically, it's also one of the laboratories that has produced the most direct advances uh, to medicine. For instance, the entire monoclonal antibody industry, which is now being used to treat all sorts of things, from cancer to rheumatoid arthritis, uh, was all developed here. My wife um, developed lymphoma a few years ago, and one of the key ingredients in her treatment was monoclonal antibodies. And the person in, who was key to pr producing a humanized form that could be used clinically was Greg Winter, who you know, was uh, deputy director of this lab and was a, has been a sci scientist here for decades. So uh, I feel that, that I've almost directly, personally benefited from uh, the work here. In the future, I think work will be on ribosomes will go in several directions. One is, although there are ribosome structures now from yeast, we need high resolution structures from lots of other uh, species, including humans. Uh, the other aspect will be how ribosomes are regulated. That is, how is this action of making proteins turned off or on, and that's particularly important in higher organisms like humans, where, uh, for instance, when you have cancer, uh, protein synthesis might be deregulated, that is, it's not controlled very well. 
or viruses can sometimes come in and take over the protein synthesis machinery from the cell. So instead of making your own proteins, you're making proteins for the virus. So regulation and understanding translation or this synthesis of proteins in humans and other higher organisms, I think those are going to be some of the more interesting areas. Thank you.